more veterans need jobs, and the Call of Duty endowment is helping to meet that need. Since 2009, it has placed over 12,000 veterans in a variety of full-time jobs with an average starting salary of $41,000. And the goal is to place 25,000 veterans in jobs by 2018. Here to tell us how this can be done is General James Jones and Codes Dan Goldenberg. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us. General, I want to start with you. The unemployment rate for our veterans right now is at an astounding 17 percent. Mm -hmm. What are the challenges they're facing when they're looking for meaningful employment? Well, it's actually a, a little bit worse than that in the sense that um, the 20 to 24 year old group, which is the generally the junior enlisted group, it, it, it's really around 41 percent. And and there are several reasons for it. Uh, on, on one side, it's uh, employers who um, don't take the trouble to uh, find out what this post-traumatic stress is all about. Uh, there's more post-traumatic stress in civilian life than there is in military life, but somehow it's become a stigma uh, for men and women who've served in combat. Uh, if you take all of the car accidents we've had in this country this year, it would eclipse by a factor of seven uh, PTS, uh, post-traumatic stress, that, that it, 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 it affects everyone, but it's manageable, and that's, the, that's one thing that the employers need to understand. Secondly, they need to understand uh, that the difference in the cultures and the transition from one to the other, and this is where I think the government can do more to help the individual soldier, sailor, airman, and marine coast guardsman who's making that transition. Things like commanding officers writing a letter of recommendation, um, on their separation papers, going to a little bit more trouble to explain what the military occupational skill was and how it relates to a civilian skill. For example, in my case, I was an infantry officer in 1970 when I was thinking about getting out. My civilian equivalent job after leading Marines in combat uh, was to be a surveyor. Mm -hmm. that, was the, that was the equivalent of a... Uh, <laughs> of an infantry officer. And so I think there's a lot that both sides can do to, to help the disadvantaged people who are in the middle so they, can, so they can get these good jobs. Wonderful suggestions, all of them. And Dan, tell us what CODE has been doing and continues to do for our veterans. Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, so the Call of Duty Endowment is really focusing on creating more market efficiency. Right now, by some estimates, there's more jobs promised towards veterans than there actually are unemployed veterans. And yet somehow veterans aren't getting that job. So there's really a disconnect between supply of veterans ready to take those great jobs and demand for them in the company. So we're trying to help on the supply side by making sure veterans are truly ready for the job market, ready to interview and be successful. On the demand side, uh, we're focused on helping companies be more efficient in hiring veterans and better off in, in terms of their ability to connect with them. Um, so if we can kind of make supply and demand meet we're going to do a much better job helping vets. Excellent. And General, there are companies who are committed to hiring veterans, correct? Well, absolutely. There's a, there's a lot of them. The, mm -hmm. uh, the, the whole U.S. Chamber of Commerce has made that part of its uh, regular mantra with their member companies, and they have over 3 million members. They're companies like Starbucks, uh, NBC Universal, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, 100,000 uh, jobs mission. Um, what else, Dan? Uh, well, Starbucks has yeah. been great, making a 10,000 commitment. Uh, Walmart, of course, Walmart, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a big way. And many, many other companies like Comcast. And, Sprint, yeah. Yeah. Swift Transportation. It's wonderful. Uh, there, but there's a lot, of good, a lot of great companies out there. But uh, they've all set up something in those companies that, that really tries to solve the, the problem. You know, what is PTS and mm -hmm. why is it not, why, why should we not pay that much attention to it? They recognize the fact that uh, veterans are, are very disciplined, uh, very loyal. They're mo more likely to turn into long-term uh, associations. They can be dependent on their trustworthy. Many of them had life and death situations, so they don't get rattled. They, they're used to pressure. Um, they sound lot, like ideal employees in so many ways. Exactly, right. exactly. And, and so I think, uh, again, on both sides, I think there's, there's more that we can do to help that, that 41% that's kind of caught in the middle. Right, and Dan, what would you like to see companies doing more of right now? Well, there's a number of things they can do. There's really, you know, in, in how they attract veterans, how they actually hire them, and how they retain them, there's all room for improvement. And there's a lot of different ways to do it that aren't really hard or expensive. On the attraction side, it's 
you know, ensuring that they advertise that they're looking for vets, scrubbing their job descriptions to ensure that they don't say um, must have college if, in fact, experience is what they really need. Right. Um, on on the, the hiring side, hiring managers, which are different from recruiters. So recruiters are HR people who are out there in the marketplace trying to bring people into companies. But the people in most companies who actually make the decisions to hire are hiring managers. And those folks are the ones we really need to target so they understand the value veterans bring to the workplace. And then on the retention side, I think a simple thing a lot of companies can do is find out how many veterans do they have within their midst. Most companies just truly don't know. When they do, they can get those veterans together, um, you know, form employee affinity groups, and often you know, create a virtuous cycle by helping the company with its own veteran recruiting practices. General Jones, Dan, thanks to both of you for all the work that you're doing for our veterans. And thanks for being with us today. Well, thanks for having us. Thanks so much. Pleasure to Thank be you. here. Thank you.